Aloha everybody, welcome to Beach Walks with Rocks at beachwalks.tv. Today's show number 29 and we're going to try and squeeze one in before that big storm maybe makes its way over us. today on the trail alongside the road so that we can give you the big expansive view from the top of the hill and um, I want to thank Matt for emailing me after yesterday's show yes I was in a cranky mood and uh, you had very kind words reminding me that you know none of this is very important and I was thinking that you know relationships are one of the most challenging aspects of life and also one of the most enriching ones and I was thinking about this difference between the number one and the number two. What I've noticed is that two number one aspects of the personality come together and fall in love or start working on a great project together and the energy is fantastic and ideas are flying and hearts are opening and then over time those little sticky wickets start to show up and it's so common to have people say, what did I ever see in that person? I can't stand him now, or I can't stand her now. She, everything she does drives me nuts. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about this mechanics that, you know, once we settle into a relationship, the number two aspect of our personality starts to show up. And the number two, by definition, is always looking for all or nothing, black or white thinking. Hold on, Lex. And is such a small-minded, powerless person that they just cr stir the pot and create all kinds of trouble. So some of the hallmarks are if you hear languaging, all or nothing, now or never, you know, you always, you never, these are hallmarks of the number two, really stirring the pot, making, making for problems. Getting the number one back in control is not always easy because the number two has a way of really taking over the body, taking over the emotions, and convincing us that, by golly, I'm right and I shouldn't change my mind about anything. You know, this, it's the other person that's at fault. But in reality, these are just little, little teeny incidences and almost always they're opportunities for consciousness so no matter what I find myself in conflict over with someone that I'm in relationship with you know if I can just get my number one back in control realizing none of this stuff is that important you know that whatever the discussion is there's a way out of it there's so much abundance in the world and looking out at these waves, it kind of reminds me, you know, because people fight over getting a wave. <laughs> that was my wave. But you know, there, if there's anything in life, there is an endless, endless, infinite supply of waves. Now, you might have to wait a few days, or you might have to go to a different beach, but you will find always more waves and good waves. Um, so let's leave it at that today, embracing this beautiful abundance that we all live in, wherever you may be today. Poor Lexi's not used to being on the lead. We'll take her down to the beach in a minute. Thanks so much for joining me. You can Skype the conch at Roxanne Darling or leave a voice comment at 949-544, over here, 1456. Aloha, everybody. script today because I think one of the things that's really helpful to realize is that in my experience you know when two people are in a close relationship their number ones truly love each other very very often the number twos pretty much can't stand each other 
And if you think about the number twos always looking out for trouble because that's their job in their minds. Um, if you find yourself in conflict, when I find myself in conflict, it's usually because either my number two or my partner's number two is acting up. And so getting that number one back, whoever can get the number one back and, and bring a little bit of consciousness to the situation is uh, really helpful. So take that as you may. Have a good day. Aloha. Let's go to the beach, Lexi. Let's go to the beach, huh?